more ways that the immune system helps suppress cancer, and these are really important when you're trying to treat cancer, is number one, uh, it protects us from infections that can cause cancer. So, and maybe that's one of the best things. If we have a healthy immune system, the chance of us getting cancer is going to be less. So, remember I said about toxicity. So, our ability to detox things is really important because if we have a really good ability to detox things, then the chance of us being toxic and our cells being toxic goes down because we're all exposed to toxins and how toxic we are really depends on our exposure over our ability to get rid of those things. So you aren't what you eat, you are more what you absorb, whether you ate it or not, but you really, you are what you don't detoxify, right? You've heard me say that before? If you don't detoxify it, it's in your body and it's going to cause a problem. Whether it's an inert toxin, like a heavy metal toxin, or it's a biotoxin. If you can't get rid of it, now a biotoxin won't go through the detox pathways, it would be affected by the immune system. So the detox pathways mainly get rid of inert things. The immune system kills living things. So our immune system's role in protecting us from cancer is to kill the living things that can cause cancer. You've heard of retroviruses and DNA viruses and things that are cancer-causing viruses. H. pylori, we'll hit that again. That's a huge nasty one that we're all so exposed to. Um, and how do you get H. pylori again? Who is listening? Hypochlorhydria, right? So you have a decreased stomach acid, H. pylori passes through the stomach, goes um, systemic, circulates through the body, can settle in the endothelial tissue, causing inflammation over 15 years, causing heart disease, and you drop dead of a heart attack. It's all caused by H. pylori. H. pylori, according to the World Health Organization, is the number one cause of stomach cancer worldwide. It's a cause of esophageal cancer, breast cancer, all cancers. H. pylori can be the cause of it. H. pylori is a gram-negative bacteria just like Lyme and X, just like Lyme it is sometimes just as difficult to kill as Lyme disease is too, and it can cause autoimmune disease as well. So biotoxins are a major cause that must be ad addressed. So the immune system also helps resolve inflammation that promotes cancer because part of the immune system is your T regulation cells, your T reg cells that calm an immune response after that immune response did its job. So when you have an inflamed immune system to kill off an infection, we want to get rid of it. We don't want this constantly going on. So when it does its job, we need to calm down. So it's like if you have a Marine Corps that's like going around our streets and just killing random things, that wouldn't be good, right? We need a sergeant that tells them to calm down. Well, our Treg cells, part of our immune system, helps calm that down. So that's important, especially when we get to what promotes cancer. The immune system can recognize and kill cancer cells. That's, a, that's a, um, a new term that we call immunosurveillance. Your immune system is basically looking for cancer cells. Well, how does it tell a cancer cell from a non-cancer cell? Because of certain tumor-specific antigens and uh, tumor-associated antigens that are associated with specific cancers. All technical stuff that we don't really need to know, but our immune system goes around and helps kill cancer cells. So, if I don't have a healthy immune system, cancer could grow. So, remember what I said at last conference? Who was here? Watch the videos. What is cancer? Cancer is when cells don't die that are supposed to die, and cells go into a rapid replication phase that aren't supposed to go into a rapid replication phase. That is cancer. Why that happens is the question of the day. So why did the cells not die? Why did they go into a rapid replication phase? Well, our immune system is responsible to help with that. So regardless of why they didn't die and why they went into a rapid replication phase, if I have a healthy immune system, it should still destroy that cancer because cancers will express certain antigens on their cell membrane. So if I have, I, I, in that lecture a couple of years ago, I said that there's a third reason why a person gets cancer, and that is that they have a suppressed immune system at some point in time. And I said that definition of cancer is a cell line doesn't go through apoptosis and it starts with one cell, it doesn't go through death, and then for some reason it goes into a rapid replication, so it's reproducing uh, cells, the same DNA 
problem, mutation, that's constantly reproducing, but your immune system should recognize that as an enemy and destroy it. So in order for you to get cancer, because the truth is all of us have cells that aren't going through apoptosis right now and some that are going through rapid replication, but we don't have cancer because our immune system goes, what the heck is that? Let's kill it. It destroys it. And you don't have cancer. So you still had to have a, some suppressed immune system. And it literally could be for a week. I was really under stress. And, and uh, I had to do this lecture at Rife Conference, and <laughs> people were really mean to me. <laughs> so, just kidding. The fourth, and maybe the, one of the more important things about your immune system is that it kills circulating tumor cells. And this is really important when you're talking about a person that does chemo. So. Uh, most of my patients have already done chemo or are doing chemo. Most patients come to me, they're already in stage four. Um, it's just the way it is. So it's, they've done chemo. The problem with chemo is chemo, uh, the good thing about chemo is that it's a poison. So it, it's a poison to cells. And it's attracted more towards rapidly replicating cell lines. Well, that's a good thing, right? Because you said cancer is rapidly replicating. That's true, cancer is rapidly replicating, so it will be attracted towards cancer cells. That's a good thing. Problem is that there's other cell lines in your body that are rapidly replicating. Your hair follicles are rapidly replicating, so it will kill your hair follicles and your hair falls out. Your immune system is rapidly replicating. Oh, that's not a good thing. So it destroys your immune system. That's why they have to take a blood test and make sure your lymphocyte level is okay for you to do the next round of chemo or they'll kill you with it. So they, they survey that. So but the problem is, is that circulating tumor cells are present in every cancer patient. So long before they even got diagnosed with cancer, you could argue that they have circulating tumor cells. That is cancer stem cells that have broken off the cancer and are looking for another place in the body to set up a house and raise a family. And yet they are not yet rapidly replicating. So chemo is not going to kill those things. That's a problem, because what's keeping them at bay right now is your healthy immune system. So that is why the incidence of metastasis goes up post-chemotherapy. If chemotherapy, it knocks down the original tumor, because that's rapidly replicating. Oh, well, that's great, the tumor's down to nothing. Uh, we're gonna do radiation, whatever, next. Um, problem is, is that you have circulating tumor cells that have now moved into a rapid replication phase that still won't be visible on a PET scan for another year and a half, and you have what's called metastasis. A healthy immune system helps keep that at bay. So if you know anybody that's going through chemotherapy, they better be doing some immune stimulation as well.